speakers, and uh, I'm ready to call out uh, Pastor Tanya to uh, speak to us today to have a word for us. So, welcome, Pastor Tanya. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we're going to fix chairs. There's some chairs. You can be seated. Please be seated. Yeah. This is just family in the living room, isn't it? <coughs> oh, my goodness. How is everybody? I've been missing you. I don't even remember where I went. That might be a sign of getting older a little bit, but that's all right. It happens. Oh, it's hot in here. Is it just me? It, oh, here, here's the skinny people in the front row. It's just you. I'm like, okay. Let me talk to us fluffy people. Nobody's going to raise their hand. To, if you're fluffy, please speak up. All right. How's, how's that for opening commentary? Well, hello to our live streamers. We don't want to forget them. Is this our third time now? Believe me, I, we don't forget you. Sometimes we forget to say it, but we don't forget you. All right. Well, you always want to ask the Lord, what you should do. There's Paul. It so blesses me to see Paul Wolver here. Thank you for coming, Paul. He's been coming to this church since this building's been in existence, haven't you? You probably hammered a nail somewhere, too. Well, you're a heating and air conditioning guy, though, right? Not anymore. Not anymore, but that was his trade for a long time. He's been under a lot of crawl spaces or in them or under houses or all kinds of crazy things. But whenever you do anything, ask the Lord what you need to do. It sounds easy, right? But I don't know about you, but sometimes I just forget to ask. When we were getting ready for the women's conference, it wasn't until I looked back that I wasn't sure what we were supposed to do with that. So I called Pastor Julie and we talked, and of course she suggested what she does for women's conferences when we travel to foreign countries, like when we went to India. And um, we have helped them to start their 501c for their women's conferences in international countries. So kudos to all of you for helping to give towards that. So I called her, she suggested, and I thought, okay, that's great. Well, I was in the middle of my first knee surgery, and I had COVID at the same time, and my daddy was sick, and I was like, you know what, that's good. We're just going to go with that. Well, then when I started to try and put it together for the conference, like the teachers and the topics and the te I, it, I just couldn't get anything. And then I, I could just feel myself trying hard to make it work. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you're just trying hard and, and all of a sudden you're thinking all the time and then you're waking up in the middle of the night going, it's not right. And then this went on for like a month and finally I thought, what is going on with this? I just asked that question and I heard, you didn't ask me. I didn't ask him. And I went, okay, well, what do you want to do? He goes, well, what did I tell you to do? I thought, well, you told me to go be in that school for the prophets, so I've been doing all this prophecy stuff. And he goes, and? Like, duh. I went, yeah, okay. So I said, I don't even know what to call it. So from then on, I just started asking, and there was a verse, and there was a title. There's Miss Lee. Thank you, Miss Lee. Miss Lee's back. The grounds are going to look better. Lee loves to do gardening, and between her and my mom, they, love, they don't walk without picking out a weed. So, you know, feel free if you see a weed to pick it out and throw it somewhere. Because if you throw it back in the ground, they'll start to grow again, right? So, yeah, get rid of it totally. So I thought, yeah, okay, I've got to push myself a little harder to ask and not be flippant. And so I've been trying to be diligent about that, not just with teachings, but with everything. So for this week, well, Lord... What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And he said one word to start with. He said, caring. I thought, well, that's nice. And I, okay, what, what, what else? And then I heard apathy. And I thought, oh, okay. So when I sat down to think about that and pray about that and see what he wanted to do, this is where he led me. He likes for us to understand what words mean. And you're going to get frustrated if you just start going to the Greek because a lot of people don't know how to even do that. My father-in-law, John, always taught me, go to the good old Webster's Dictionary, the old version, not the new version. Go to the old Webster's Dictionary and start there. But what I found really develops words 
are synonyms and antonyms. So listen here for a minute. Caring, having or showing concern for the well-being of others. Now, apathy was the second word, remember? Lack of interest, enthusiasm, or lack of concern. When I heard caring, it reminded me of our camp this year for our young people, Youth Excelling Spiritually. This is our 25th camp. That's a lot of years, 25 years. And our theme this year is be kind. It's be kind. And yes, the tie-dye shirts are not pastel. They're actually awesome primary colors. They've been ordered. They actually arrived. I said to Sarah, have that lady send a picture. Because the last time we ordered tie-dye, they came and they were pastel yellow and pink, and the boys were like, yeah, no. <laughs> they were great. They wore them for the whole camp, and never once after that did I ever see a guy wear those pastel shirts, and they were pretty cool. So be kind. In Colossians 3.12, in the NIV, Paul wrote, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And then I went on a little bit, 13... Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Good reminders, right? I appreciate what Tom said about reading something and then you see it at a different time and it's a whole different frame of mind, a whole different trail the Lord leads you on. Leads you on. So one of the things I was thinking about, I wanted to go off into just onto kindness, which I've preached that for years. I think it's important. I'm happy there's bumper stickers and signs up now about it. Yippee. And lots of ministers have been preaching it, but I like when the world starts waving the flag for it. Um, but I thought, well, what about the caring part? You said caring. He didn't say kind. He said caring. caring. Kindness doesn't happen if you don't care. That was the statement. Kindness doesn't happen if you don't care. And I went, okay, I can work with that. So let's look at some adjectives of caring. Attentive, benevolent. We have a benevolent fund here for, to help folks. Compassionate. My father-in-law, the first book that he wrote when he started the ministry, he wrote a booklet on compassion. We give it to all of our first-time folks that sow money for the first time. They receive that book. Concerned, considerate, kind, kind-hearted, thoughtful, generous, helpful, selfless, and understanding. Here's the antonyms, which means the direct opposite of that word. Disregarding, ignoring, overlooking, aloof. Now, when we're reading these words, I was, I, the best way to work with the Holy Spirit is allow him to teach you things but allow yourself to be reproved and corrected at the same time, like it's a duel. So when I read the word aloof, I thought, am I aloof? And I was waiting, I thought, I was ready to go, I thought, I, I was like, yeah, no. And he went, wait a minute, and I was like, oh, crap. So I was like, okay, you know, people say they're teachable until you get poked. And then all of a sudden we go like this. Yeah, mm, uh, hmm. it's even hard with the Holy Spirit. Imagine if he has to send someone to tell you to your face. Um, and with this aloof thing, he said, listen, you appear aloof sometimes. He didn't say all the time, so I was thankful for that. He said, sometimes. He said, you need to get on top of this. And he said, I know your heart, but sometimes you're busy, you're thinking about other things, and your face looks like you aren't engaged at all which you're not. And so you got to be aware. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And then there was a pause. I thought, oh, no, there's going to be more. He said, you need to be more engaged with people like you used to be when you didn't have all the responsibilities you have. When I didn't have this responsibility, I had a lot more time to sit with people and talk with people. He said, listen, I need you to go back with some of that. And I'm thinking, well, Lord, I can't do all that. He said, yes, you can with who I tell you. So not everybody. You don't have to try to get to every single person, but there's some certain people, like especially at our young people's camp. There's 80 kids here. We got 30, 40 staff. 
and you can just be busy running around doing all these details. He's like, listen, there's a couple that are coming that need your time and attention. There's going to be other people that are offended because they're not going to get the time. But there's a Timothy and a Mary and a Paul coming. And I'm not going to show you. You're going to find them. And I was like, yes, sir. I got that. Mm-hmm. So you see how he works with things? He just is really specific. He's detailed. And I started to go back all the... Then I, he said, well, if you want to go back through all those words, I can give you an example for every one. <laughs> and I thought, okay, not today. Not today, please. And he left it alone. Disregarding, ignoring, overlooking, aloof, distant... Here's the one you really don't want to have to be corrected on, hard-hearted. This is tough for us in some of our things that we deal with in society. We've taught it on at camp for years, but how do you hold the line of the word? And we, we did a camp one year, and it was about loving without compromise. How to still love people like Jesus, but not compromise to what they failed as sin in their life. How do you not throw the stone when you have sin too. So it's easy to make yourself feel better because you look at their sin and say, well, look at that. That's really bad. That's worse. Well, we don't get that privilege. Jesus didn't come to judge the world, right? But he still uphold, upheld what the word said. Standoffish, unbending, remote, and here's one, unromantic. And I was like, and the first thing I said was, oh, well, the guys aren't going to like that. And here's what I heard. The women are just as guilty. And then I said, Lord, you didn't say guilty. He said, you know what I mean. <laughs> right? right? The men get blamed for some of those things. Well, why does it always have to be the men that have to be romantic? Right? But I thought, wow, the direct opposite of caring is unromantic. Might have to bring that up at the singles and marriage conference, right? So listen, the Father and the Lord Jesus, they care about things. Let's look at Luke 12 in the ESV. And listen, don't get hung up about translations. I was a mess when I first started to teach because I had been told in my past that the only, the only translation we should use that was as close to the original manuscript was the King James Bible. And so... I remember telling Wayne that. He goes, well, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard that. And he's Mr. Scholar. Well, who said that? I said, well, I don't know, but it's stuck in my head. And he said, well, what are you, what are you going to do today? And I said, well, I'm going to do the Amplified because I had been learning a lot from Joyce Meyer. And listen, the Lord will have you do what he needs you to do to communicate to his people. And if you do the work yourself to really understand what a verse and a scripture is saying so you don't misrepresent him, then sometimes he's going to have you read it in some different translations for them. What's the point to get up and read a bunch of stuff and nobody gets it except they think you're smart and you're, you did a lot of work and, man, that Greek word, whoo, they, they're really good. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. If we can't do what we do and people think, I could do that too. I have something to share. That's why the most powerful things are testimonies and stories of what God has done. And our young people, that's how I've started out folks at camp for years, is could you just get up here? You don't even have to get up. Just stand over here. We'll skip the microphone sometimes. And remember that story you told me about what God did for you? Could you just repeat that for everybody? And you start with those kind of things. The Lord likes to go after things we don't catch on the first run by. Um, I had been speaking to someone a couple of months ago, and um, I don't want to say names, so how do I want to do this? The short of it was, the Lord says, listen, you need to get this person glasses. And I'm like, well, okay, that's great. I'm sure the board would love to do that. We can do these things in our benevolent fund. This will be great. Well, I forgot. I forgot until I made my eye appointment about a month ago. And then I heard, yeah, what about so-and-so? And I'm like, oh, sorry, Lord, I forgot. And so that person came this week. This person's in their late 60s, never had an eye exam. 
needed glasses, but was using glasses from the dollar store to try and get by, and it was affecting how they minister. And um, so we went. And I had been there on Wednesday and told the um, eye doctor that someone was special was coming and how wonderful they were. Well, guess what? They hit it off with the eye doctor. The eye doctor was so thrilled, he said, listen, I'm just going to... I'm just going to do half, the, half of my fee. And I'm like, well, thank you. We received that. And when I had said to the person, listen, this is what we want to do, they didn't want to receive it. And I said, listen, is it true or not that you have never been to an eye doctor and you need legit glasses? Like, you can't minister. You can't read what you need to do. Well, yeah. And I said, okay, well, either God's right or not. So, like, can you just receive it? Well, Sure. So they hit it off, walks out, picks the, the first pair of glasses this gentleman picks. It's awesome. He loves them. He picks them. And then I hear, get sunglasses too. <laughs> like prescription sunglasses, which I never get because I lose them. And, you know, it's like, ah, they're as much as glasses usually. The lady comes over and I said, well, can you tell us about these sunglasses? I think we should get sunglasses. She said, you know, the craziest thing is going on. They're 35% off right now. That's never happened. We don't do that. I said, well, we do today. <laughs> and this person was so blessed and so tickled. And that's just something that I would never have thought about. He cares about those kind of things for people. In Luke 12, 6, in the ESV, it says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. And so one of the keys to this is that we have to be able to do things like this for people, even at the expense of ourselves. What if he tells you you need glasses, but you need to get this person one first? Or if you don't have a lot of extra money, you don't have a fund, and it's going to take all you have to give this person something. Let's look at, let's go back a little bit. Let's go to 1 Kings 17. I would bet I'm in the NIV case. I'm not sure. We're going to read this for a second. I think we have time. It's such a good record. Now Elijah the Tish, Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Oh, look, I looked up. There it is. And you have my notes, Case, right, to see how far we're going to go? It looks like a long way to go, doesn't it? Okay, let's get rolling. And the word of the Lord came to him. Depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. This record is such a great record. It speaks to so many things right now. We could put gas in there for food. Because you know what? If you don't have the gas to get to your job, it's going to soon affect your food supply. Gas out in California, the girls texted me, is uh, almost $10 a gallon. All right, next verse, 5. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the, the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Wow, okay. So for those of you that hear lots of, you know, we, we love to be prepared for things, and I'm all of a fan for that. But there's a lot of folks, and I remember the days when you live in paycheck to paycheck, you don't have extra money to stockpile a bunch of stuff. Seven. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Let's keep rolling. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? Here we go. As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home 
and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of all will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. Well, good thing somebody's hearing from the Lord, right? Yes. For this is what the Lord, where were we at? Did we do 14? Okay, so she went away and did as Elijah had told her, Elijah. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. There's a whole lot of preaching you could do from these. I, my, my goodness, faith and trust and prophecy and word of knowledge. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. Now listen, I get this a lot. I hear this from people. I had to deal with this this week. And we were talking about it in the back. We got to keep our faith in the Lord. We were in Florida recently, and we did three deliverance ministries down there. And it's like all craziness broke out during that time. Backs went out, people got sick, the other couple went home, another person died, chickens died, depression came, everybody was like, it's like, and the temptation is to say, you know what, I'm going to back off. Because you know, when I do all that, look what the devil, look what happens, look what happens. Or to live in this expectation that every time I minister, and we have a minister friend that's older, she's probably 85 now, but she will preach that he, she knows he's coming for the devil. The last time she preached here, she went home and got bitten by a copperhead in her garden. At some point, we have to be above that idea that the attack is going to be coming because we're pressing in. Because how are we going to stay? Do you see what I'm saying? It's going to wear your mind down quick. It, It was difficult for me this week because I was tired and I just, I started reading all the lists. I started making lists. This happened to this person. This happened to this person. This happened to us. And all of a sudden, you're like questioning. You're on the verge of saying, yeah, God, what's going on? Like, what is this all about? Which that's okay to ask that. But I could feel my faith kind of deflating. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a deflation of your faith. And all of a sudden, the enemy, it's just like if you watch Top Gun, he just puts the, the uh, did you see that? Who hasn't seen Top Gun? I've seen it four times. Like, I'm so busy. Well, they do this maneuver where... How do I explain it? Somebody's on their tail and they just stop the plane and they go, usually back, they go behind it and then they shoot the target. It's just like this total slam on the brakes. The plane goes behind them and they take the shot. But that's what happens to us if we allow our faith to deflate. If we allow ourselves to stall, start questioning all that hesitation, he can pull some slick maneuvers on us and come shoot us from behind. Now the Lord can work things for good, But I'd rather avoid all that and see where the weakness in my mind is. And so that's why we got to get a hold of all our negative testimonies. It's difficult when you don't feel good. I have been there this year and you don't feel good and you are going through and we want to replay it to everybody. I don't know why. Do we need comforting? Do we need? I don't know. Does it make us feel better? Not in the long run. It's not going to help us. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill, the son. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. This is not good, as Seth would say. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? This is pretty serious, folks. Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Wow. We do this to ourselves. We do this to ourselves first. Give me your son, Elijah replied. Now, do we have the guts and the faith to do this? And he took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I'm staying with by causing her son to die? 
Fair question. But he went to the right place, right? He complained up and he was doing prophetic action. Like he's, he's in the process of moving towards healing, not giving up. He's pressing in. Next verse. Then he stretched him. I, I just read this and I thought, would I do this? Yes, I would. You have to talk yourself and you say, yes, I will do this. Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times. I walked myself through that. How do you do? You lay on the person. Then do you get off the bed and stand up like calisthenics and lay on him again? I mean, yeah. it's kind of weird. Like, you're going to do it? And how did you know to do it? Like, it's in you to do it. Yes. You've got to have faith that this stuff's going to come, and you're going to be prophetic in your actions, not just in your words, and you're going to move on this. And cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. I love that he said what he wanted. When people come for healing, when people come for prayer line, when people come for deliverance, what do you want? What do you want? You're telling me, but you're really saying it to the kingdom. What do I want? We got to declare what we want. Lord, I need gas money. Lord, I need an extra stream of income. Lord, I need this. Quit wait, waiting on all the politics to change and for the next administration to come in or whatever you're after. You know, pray for those in office, but what are you going to do now? Really? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times. Next one. The Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Look at the key though. He heard Elijah's cry. Didn't he already know what was going on? Didn't he know? But he heard his cry. There's the relationship part of it, not the religion. Religion would just line everything up, and this is the law, and this is how it's going to be. Religion would start saying, this is what you didn't do, and this is why you're here. But relationship, he cried out, and there was an answer. And I think it's so important that he kept moving in the process of it. He was doing things that kept things coming. Obedience to the revelation gives you more revelation. And the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house, and he gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Let's stop there. She didn't have anything, did she? And I believe as... Um, things go on in the world that we're living in. And if you live long enough, and if you haven't already experienced this, he's going to ask you to give some things and do some things that you do not appear to have the supply for, or it's going to take your supply. It'll happen with promotion. Any promotion I've ever received in the kingdom, I had to give up things that looked like I was left with nothing to do, no job, no assignment. And that's when a promotion came. That's what surrender all is. Are you real, willing to stand up for Jesus and the name of Jesus and whatever the Lord's given you about the Lord Jesus if it's going to cost you your job? Sarah said, when the tornado struck this week, we had a tornado a mile from our house on Seth's birthday party night. We've got all the grandmas and the grandpas there and we're putting food on the table and here comes this tornado coming. It hits the Myers warehouse building after it jumps it go, according to Lee, who was out on the back deck, it came through our property here, went over the church, and you can follow the line of it. You can see the trees, and it kind of veered to the left and went right, hit houses, trees, and hit the Myers Distribution Center, where Sakar, Sarah's husband, was in there working at the time. It flattened the whole side of the building. It's kind of crazy to see the destruction it can cause. So she says to me, well, all the workers were sent home, but the management had to stay and be inside in the center, sheltered in the center of the building. Really? And I'm like, really? Who made that crazy decision? Like, why in God's green earth were you all people even there if they said to be there? Really? What if it flattened the whole building? Yeah. At some point, some people, I don't know how that all went, had to say, I guess I better stay. Because this chick would have said, yeah, love you. I'm going home with everybody else. But that might be a hard decision if this is your livelihood, if this is your job, that you're an authority to the, these people, are an authority over you. I don't know what all the decisions were, but I thought of that, thinking about some of the decisions that we make or don't make. All right, where are we at? Oh, the thing about caring... You have to have the Holy Spirit work with you because our lives are busy and there's just things we're not going to get. We're going to miss. 
somebody I know um, graduated with her master's in counseling. And I thought, well, that's nice. That's great. Saw it on Facebook and her husband. And then I, I, I thought of it three more times. Yeah, that's, and I kept saying, that's great, that's great. Then it dawned on me, I've thought of that three times this week. Why would I think of that three times this week? And then I hear, send a card. Kind of like that, like, duh, send a card. Oh, okay. And a gift, too. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I get a text message back from this person. I can't tell you how much that meant to me that you recognized it in this way. Well, guess what? You all did because the card said from Tanya, Jeff, and all of CFF because the $50 gift card came from all of us. And it really meant something to this person who finished a master's of counseling with four children pregnant with another one and a husband and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, sometimes we're just a little slow on the uptake. I write a lot of cards. I know you can't all read them. Sometimes I try to type the notes along with what I wrote. This is why a card ministry is really not my calling, but I have to do it. He makes me do it. I try. I laugh now. He's like, you need to type that. I'm like, really? So yeah, people get a card. I sign it and then I typed and fold it up and put it in there so they can read it. You know, I was asking for a miracle with my handwriting, but he said that wasn't going to happen unless I wanted to do hours of practice, and I opted for typing and sticking it in there. He cares about things. And I'm happy he reminds me. So no matter what you are doing, who are you doing it with? How do you learn these things? How do you know? Well, the Lord can t- tell you a lot of things, but it's up to the generations to teach the generations. I'm sitting in a room full of elders of the church, elders of the faith that I've learned how to do ministry from. And I'll start naming them. Wilf and Leany, Mike and Judy, Marty, Mary Amlin, Patty, my mom. Let me look. Mary Lou's not here. I love all the rest of you, but I'm looking for some of my older ones that have been in my life for a long time. Tom and Sue, Kevin and Sarah. Do you go to the funeral? Do you make time to go to the viewing? Do you send the card and sign it? Texting's wonderful, I, that's, but that's, do you write? Wilf, my, my Uncle Wilf and Aunt Leanie have been to more funerals probably than Jesus because he raised them up, I guess, but yeah. That's what it looks like to take care of folks. I learned sending cards from my mom. My mom has sent cards for years, and when she had an oversight, she was a vice president of a hospital for a lot of years after she was the director of nursing. And she was extremely busy, and she wrote all her cards out for two or three months ahead, sometimes a year ahead. She signed them, she wrote them, filled out the addresses, and then her secretary had them and got them mailed on time. It means something. I remember when I was in a company, and I was one of the top salesmen and recruiters for that company. And every time we did something spectacular, the head, the president, who was a a wonderful Christian woman, would handwrite notes to us. And I literally remember getting notes. Let's see if I have one. I don't. And I would open it up. I would hold it up to the light to see if that was a copy or if she really wrote that. And when I did, I would cry. So I could cry now thinking about it because I knew how many thousands of those she probably had to write. And it meant something for that to be acknowledged. So there's a lot of things that we can do to acknowledge people. And it doesn't require a whole lot of money. Thank goodness for dollar stores or you can make your card or whatever. Because Hallmark, bless Hallmark, but y'all are a little expensive. Um, oh we did the glasses this is cool when Julie was here for the conference I said you know I haven't heard from Pastor David Pastor David was the gentleman there were a lot of ministers with us but he was the one that was like our personal guide he was the one when I had the dream about the crazy stuff happening and I told him he's like we're changing the whole itinerary we're not doing this this is a real thing and just a teddy bear of a guy do you have his picture case I think he has, there he is, that's Pastor David. He's, he's a teddy bear, but he hears from the Lord, and he was pretty much our guardian over there. Well, I told Julie I hadn't heard from him, and I had been doing WhatsApp with him for a while. I'd never spoken to him on text ever that I knew of. So when she was here, I said, man, I just, I've been thinking about him a lot. I know we asked him to come to the States if he would come visit all of us, but I really feel like Jeff and I want to sow some money into him personally, just from us, to help him and his family. 
During COVID, I know he spent all of his extra money and his own money and hours to take care of the ministers. Not He didn't have time for the people, but the ministers that ministered to people. She said, you know what? I saw him on Facebook. I don't know how to get a hold of him. You know, I think he's leaving. That's it. I literally, two days ago, he texted me. Out of the blue. I don't even know how he texted me. I talked to him on WhatsApp. He texted me. Pastor Tanya, I want to come see you. I'm in... I'm in San Diego. What part of California are you in? I want to see you before I leave. He thought I lived in California with all the other girls. And I said, no, I'm five hours away on the plane. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so disappointed. I want to remind you how much I loved when you were here. And I, want, and I know how much the meeting meant to you with the men. So they asked us to go. We're preaching women's conferences. And he said one day, listen, there's 75 men that showed up unannounced. They're all leaders. And they would like one of the women to come preach to them. And nobody raised their hand. Nobody wanted to do it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. It was my favorite time in all of India. And there were lots of cool things about that. It, won't, it takes too long to go through all the testimonies. But it was life-changing for me. He said, they want you to come back. I want you to come back. I said, well, okay, I'll ask the Lord. He said, pray for them. 26 of them are now in prison for the past month for preaching the gospel. They're being beaten and starved. 26 of these, these just wonderful, gentle, kind ministers. And the next breath, he's like, please come back. I'm like, you better go if the Lord says, but he better say, because they'll come for you too. Especially when you have blonde hair and you're a woman, you're obviously not from there. So I was so tickled and I said to him, oh my gosh. And I tell him the whole story about Jolie and thinking about him. And I said, listen, my husband and I would like to sew into you. We personally want to give it to you, not through the ministry you work with. We would like to give it to you. He says, oh my goodness, I'm so overcome. I'm crying. I don't know what to tell you. I've been asking the Lord for an angel to help me to do it because he didn't need to say it. What he gets is so minimal that he has to take from his own family stuff to do the work. So that's, those are the kind of things you just can't plan it. You say, okay, Lord. <clears throat> but it took him a while to get it all figured out. He wants the basics in life covered, and he wants the beyond too. Any kingdom promotion is to allow you more opportunity to show that you care. That's what promotion's about. It's about giving it away. Hebrews 10.24 says, And let us consider how we may, we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. All right, do we have time to do this? We're just getting started. Holy Hannah Bananas. Hear my pages? Yeah. They're going, oh, what? What time is it? Well, I teach again in July. <laughs> I'll save the rest for July. How's that? <laughs> what I'm going to share, in, I'll save it till my next time because I've got to make some trips. I've got to go to South Carolina and California, so I will be gone a couple of different weeks. Um, but I'll leave, I'll pick up on points of wisdom that have helped me navigate working with people, understanding situations better so that I could care and I could be kind. And so there's, how many are there? 10. So I'll save those 10 because there's something else we need to do. Proverbs 16, 24 in the NLT Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy for the body. It says kind, and in some translations it says gracious or pleasant. Proverbs 15, 18 in the NIV says, A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict and strife, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Part of the caring and part of what the Lord likes to do all the time in almost every situation I know is to honor. He likes to honor He'll have you honor people that don't believe what you believe. The first person he ever had us ordain, he, t I, he told me, and I went to the guys and said, can we do this? And they were gracious enough to say yes, because this person didn't believe in communion. Katrina just went, what? Yep, that's what I said, what? Well, we can't possibly do that, Lord, because we do believe in that. And I let it ride, and it wasn't a couple hours, and he's like, you're going to do this. And there was no... It, it was very emphatic. You're going to do this. And it was about honor. It was about the faithfulness of this person. That person didn't care if they had a certificate or a, 
a card with their name on it. They'd been doing the work. They were in the 70s. They'd been doing this work since their 20s, since raised in it. The fruit was evident, but he wanted that person recognized and honored. It was a good lesson for me. Um, with honor, let's see if I put this in here. What does honor look like? Here's some synonyms for you. Celebration, credit, giving them credit, attention. I thought this one was great. Confidence in, confidence in. I mean, how do you let somebody get up and teach on your podium and you know what you don't agree on scripturally? That if they don't honor you, you're going to honor the Lord to do what you're told. But if they don't honor you, they could get up there and cause a whole big old mess if they start talking about stuff that, that are disagreements. But that gentleman before, he never once got up on the stage. He asked us to come meet with him. Scripturally, he wanted to show us what he thought about communion. And we decided to stick with what we believed. But he had scriptural, what he felt was his backup for his, his belief. If we had communion, sometimes they would leave, and sometimes they would just graciously not partake, he and his family. But if you care about the other person and, the, and that, even if you don't know them, the Lord will work it out. Honor is to esteem, and it's to recognize. As I was thinking about these two people, this song came to my head. I just heard it. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. And they're not young in the Lord anymore. They're older. They're faith builders. They're pillars. They're cornerstones. They're ministers, pastors, friends, parents, grandparents. Um, so I looked up the lyrics that we know. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. This is this couple. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. This speaks to what we talked about earlier. For I have caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. And these folks are higher ground. And they're very grounded in who they are. I have this on my desk. Someone had given it to a gift as a gift to someone else, and I saw it. And I went home, and thank you for eBay, because I found my own, and I bought it. And I love this, because years ago, I started to preach on um, finding gold in people, finding the gold in people. And this reminds me of them, because they taught me how to find gold in people because I couldn't find it in myself when I got called to do what I'm doing now. But they did. And they've encouraged me. They've encouraged all of you. They've healed us. They've given us words of knowledge. They've ministered all the manifestations into our life. There's a twofold part to this. The man looks like he's actually made out of gold, doesn't he? Like, like copper, gold, brass, an expensive material. You can see the gold in the pan. The twofold part is they know how to see the golden people, but they know how to give gold, not just with words, but with money. They've sowed their money all their life. I've been to huge conventions where there were 10,000 people, and Mike got up and spoke to, about being almost bankrupt, not once, but twice. Maybe more he hasn't told us about, I don't know. And yet they still gave, and they still gave personally into people's lives. So they sowed their money and their finances into people. And um, that's a huge part of caring. Because when people give their money, you know who taught us that? Was uh, Pastor Ramirez, George Ramirez. He's the one that said that from this stage. You can say you have people's hearts, but until they give money from their heart, you don't have nothing. Because that's what the pull of money is. And so, yeah, there are all of these things and more. He turned 82 this year. She's going to turn 80. They're aging backwards, actually. They're so full of fire. They're not retired. They're refired. And on Thursday, June 9th, they celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. 60 years, folks. 
A prophetess from Paris was recently with Dr. Lierden, and they were all together in Florida. And the prophetess, who is an older established prophet, said, Mike is a visionary. Well, that's confirmation, and that's true. He still has visions for this church, for all of us, for healing, for the things that Jesus puts on his heart, with Judy also. There, I gave their names away. You knew who it was. But you're in this church, the Christian Family Fellowship exists because he went to my father-in-law with the vision that God had to say, listen, word of knowledge, God said this to you, I'm telling you again, are you going to get it done? And they've been getting it done for a lot of years, 25 plus, a lot more than that, isn't it? And then she said to Judy, touch as many young people as you can, you carry the anointing. And yes, she does. If you aren't joyful, you're going to get around Judy and be joyful. And what I love about Judy is she will just as quickly tell you that she's had battles in her life for as joyful as she is, she battles low time. Where someday she doesn't feel like getting out of bed or doing what the Lord's asked her to do. And she's living proof and testimony of you can overcome. Every time I hear, thank you, Jesus that we didn't say for a lot of years, I think of you two. Well, I think of Jesus, but then both of you. When the Bama comes, we all better get a Coke, a Diet Coke, glass of water, whatever your preferred beverage is. Bring your stool because we're going to be waiting behind them. Might be a little wait. They have some testimonies of which they always have a lot of testimonies. And you know what? They're always like as brand new as the day before. But I would love for... Mike and Judy to come up. Pastors Mike Magel, Judy Magel, they're working on book three and four. Three's almost done, which is Judy's next one, My Journey with Jesus. Mike's got another one in the works, so come on up. Oh, look at you guys. Come on up here. Come on up. Do you want to stand right there? That's fine. Um, Casey, is it better on the stage or is there okay? Our live stream? Well, first of all, we want to you know what? Well, bring these out. I want Tom to bring these out. And then... Those are for... Oh, those are for Mike. They're really for both of you, but Judy's going to... Oh, my. There's so many of them. There's two oh, dozen red ones because we love you so much. We had to do red. And they say, happy 60th anniversary. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And it has all our names and all of us from CFF. And, it's too much. Well, no, it's not. But <laughs> oh, Mike gives her one. It's that special one. So, well, here, let's step aside and we'll let Kevin come take a picture of him with these roses. Can they help Mike or Tom help them hold them? I don't know. They're kind of heavy. Smile, pretty. There we go. She was gonna get some flowers just because, but right here, guys. Look at look at Kevin. Yay. And then we'll, we'll put them up. For, we'll set them over to the side. You want to just set them on the piano, Tom? Okay. Well, I'll just take them back up to your desk. Oh, no, sit them up there. They can oh. see them. Oh, they're so pretty. We all have to enjoy them before she takes them home. We also have, we do have a card for you also with a gift in it. But we're going to give you a microphone. You know, Judy, there's the microphone, the coveted microphone. They've got some things to share with us. Okay. I guess I'll go first. Or you want to go first? You're older, so you tell me. Which one are you going to do? You're going to do I, I'm going to do this one, show and tell. Okay. That one. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So you want to go first or me? No, I'll, I'll just fill in where you miss. Stuff. Okay. <laughs> so do you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> well, here we were. I was going to my car, and, you know, as a woman, I always have so much stuff. I'll be so happy with the return that I won't just have to, and I'm gone, okay? So I had my purse, my drink, my a box of angels here. Now I'm bringing, okay, thank you. I'm bringing this to show and tell because this is really a cool, this is so cool. This is God at work. Oh my, big time. So here I am in my car. Now we're in Florida, okay, Sarasota. So I had all this picture me with all my stuff. Well, I don't normally do this, but... 
I put this on the roof of my car because my hands were full, okay? So to get my hand free, so I put it up on the roof of the car, got all settled, put everything in there, and lo and behold, I take off, go down our street, go out into the huge main area, which is um, called University Parkway, which is thousands and thousands of cars and traffic. Well, there I am turning, and this box of angels slid off of the roof of my car onto the pavement. I had, no, I had not a clue. I didn't know. I didn't know because, you know, I'm, I'm heading this way. Okay, so the lady coming across the intersection sees it happen, and she thinks the car behind me will stop and pick them up and then catch me and, you know, give this to me. They didn't do it. So she does it. Now, this is really super busy, okay? And she stops, she picks this up, and I had this little skinny rubber band on here, which I don't normally use. I use a big, thicker one, but it, the thicker one broke, so I just hurriedly put this little skinny rubber band on there. So would you believe that this is all intact? When she found it on the, on the pavement, it was just like this. So she, and she sees that, oh, we're ministers and got our name on it, got our address, got our phone number. Well, I mean, what's, and so she opens it up and it's full of angels. And all, you know how I give them out and all that. Okay, so she opens this up and she says, I've got to call my sister because Psalm 9111 said that um, God commands his angels to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. And Jesus loves you. And that was on this card. And she's going, oh, my sister, the next day is going from, since, from um, Sarasota, taking their little five-year-old up to Cincinnati to Children's Hospital to have their, you want to hold the box? Okay. To um, have their, okay, to have their, um, she had a trach. And she was going to have this um, this throat surgery, you know, remove this after five years. Now, she was born 11 ounces, this little thing, this little baby. So for five years, she hasn't, you know. So anyway. Something else, oh. something else was that's engraved in her driveway and the cement. In the, in the couples, the couple that was going to have the little girl that they're going to take to the hospital next you know, to Cincinnati that was in on their driveway yeah. so it just really meant it meant something to them that it was going to be okay because anyway I had just finished the last bite of my food at dinner and the phone rings and Mike says is this this pastor Michael Magel and he says speaking he said, well, I'm so-and-so, and I found this box of angels. I didn't even know my box was missing <laughs> because I do that in the evening after, you know, I just sit down and put them together, you know, for the next day. Well, I hadn't got that far yet. So she calls to tell us, and she's the one that picked them up. She called her sister, and then we'd be all right. She said, if I call and have, give them your number, and then you can pray for this little girl. Oh, so we do. We prayed for the family, and they pray for us. I mean, it was a mutual thing. And anyway, the surgery went really great. She's doing well. And then we got to pray for the lady sister, which returned them, you know, the box of angels to us the next day at the 7-Eleven. And then we prayed for her because she just had surgery and we wanted to take her to lunch. She says, oh, I can't eat yet. I'm on just a liquid diet. So I said, well, when we come back. So isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean. Well, they looked at it as a sign, you know, that yeah. everything was going to be okay. I mean, it just solidified things for her. Yeah, and they were, yeah, it was, so that was, I just love that. She opened it up really carefully, and then she just said, I just have to show you. But, I mean, it all, it, it's just amazing. Oh, the flag went off, but see, I don't even know how it opens. How about I hold it and you open it? There you go. Oh, that's how it does. Thank you. And then there, so then there's all these angels and all of this, and they're just, they were just all there. It says Bubbly Bell in here. <laughs> I think she's a bubbly bell. 
<laughs> it does, doesn't it? So we want to show them all your, this looks like her angel office. Yeah, and then I just put those together, you know, in the evening I just sit down and, you know, put all that together, and um, there they were. So this is her angel office for you live streamers that are right now texting saying, we cannot hear what oh. you're saying without this. And it says she's a bubbly bell. <laughs> All right. Would you like me to put that for somewhere for you? Sure. Okay. That's, yes. And here's the book. Okay. But isn't that amazing? I mean, God. that just shows you how God, that just showed me how important we are, every detail of our lives, that even though I made a mistake and put those angels on the roof of my car, which I don't, I've ever done it. I've never done that before or since. But God worked it out that, hey, this, I'm going to turn this lemon into lemonade. Yes. And for that lady to even stop and see him and pick him up. Okay, that's, uh, I'm, I'm still overjoyed about it. Well, you know, um, as Tanya was teaching and everything, I just happened to flip over because I wanted to use my phone for the verses, but I looked at the, uh, verse for today and I thought it really was appropriate it said this is in Romans 12 10 it says be devoted one to another in love honor one another above yourselves mm. and uh, you know we both had uh, terrible sinus infections uh, we're pretty much over them now but when uh, we, uh, we tried to get in to see our doctor for three days. We couldn't get in, so finally we went to uh, uh, urgent, care. urgent care. Which you've never done before. Never, never done that. And we've never done it before. Done it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we I mean, we were, we, we were both pretty puny. And, uh, we didn't know how sick we were. No, we well. didn't. No. I mean, you know, when you feel she bad. Were, she was close to uh, having pneumonia. I mean... So, and they took some, yeah, oh, okay. oh, wow, yeah. oh, should we stand apart? Oh, darn. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, they t took such great c uh, care of us, and this one lady, particularly, she was a uh, uh, nurse practitioner. Yeah. And they're just like a doctor, you know. I, I, I've been going to a urologist for five years, and I never met him yet, because... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I see a nurse practitioner <laughs> all the time. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if he exists. Even. <laughs> I saw a picture. They had a, they, they had a poster you know of him. What he looks like when you, know, you see him, you'll know. He's him. a nice-looking fellow. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's busy. <laughs> but he's busy. <laughs> he's busy. <laughs> but anyway, you know we, and naturally. Judy pulls out her angels as, as she always oh, she always does, you know. And there were several girls in the office plus the nurse practitioner, and uh, gave them all uh, uh, angels. Angels. Well, this opens the door. And of course, I I can't let them get by without saying, "Do you need prayer for something?" Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, she says, "You know, uh, I never turn down prayer." Smart woman, very said, smart woman. I said, well, what do you need? And there was a couple things, but uh, one of and the things. And see, excuse me, honey, but you know what? People think that we're so spiritual that we know exactly what you need. We know, well, you know what? You just We don't ask. know squat. We, you, just, you just ask them, well, what, what, because they, I may see that they need such and such, but you know what? They don't want that. They want something else. I mean, so you ask, you know. Okay, so yeah. you ask. Yeah, what you can know by five senses, you don't have to go to the Spirit. No, so you ask. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. And she starts just... Yeah, just... Oh. Yeah, right. Just unloading. Yeah. Oh, and she starts things. crying. Yeah. Just, yeah, well, go so... Go ahead and tell her what a couple of the things were. Well, she had just lost her father, and then she had had COVID again. She had two COVIDs. I mean, had it twice. I mean, two times getting over that and losing her father. And then there was another um, death in the family that was real traumatic for her also, plus all this other stuff. And then, yeah. Just, anyway, so. Bad, bad knee. Oh, yeah, bad knee. Bad and knee. so and Mike's going, wait a minute. Judy, 
take stress and trauma off of this lady. I said, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. So I got to do that. And then... Yeah, I, I said, uh, well, let's look at that knee. And I said, Chris, I love the thing of drawing out the... Uh, growing out the growing leg. out the leg, yeah. you know. So I said, let's get you in a straight back chair, put her in there and, and drew her leg out. And of course she fell it too. It, uh, it just, well, it just it. went... It just like a pop, just like that. It's so neat anymore, Mike just... He'll like get the ankle bones, you know, he'll get them together or he'll get, you know, try and work. And then it's like, oh, he didn't even yeah, have to I don't say get anything. To say it. I don't just, get to say it, just, it anymore. It's like he's getting so good at it that it just. Well, it's it, not, I'm not getting, well, the Holy Spirit's getting better. That's at it. true. <laughs> but, the, but, but you're working so close together that once you, yeah, yeah. Right. and anyway, it just is a done deal. And it's like, because then, we always forget, we say, oh, keep your eyes open so you can see this. Because a lot of times, you know, people always want to close your eyes when you pray, or, you know, they just think you get real spiritual, and, go, and it says, watch and pray. So we watch and yeah, pray. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I always like to say, well, God just gave you a touch, you know? I a mean, God shot. You say a God shot. Sometimes God shot. And then you plug our book. No, I don't do that. <laughs> I, might, I have some with us that are $10 a piece. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't do that. No, you don't do that. I usually give them to them free. That's true. <laughs> but uh, so I said, okay, try your leg, you know. No pain, no nothing. It just immediately. Yeah. It was immediate. I mean, that's what's so cool is they get immediate results, and it just builds their believing. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's so that's, much that's fun. That's why the leg thing is such a, and, and, and can I just believing. Can I just say one other thing? When, when you step out, God steps in. Oh, uh, yeah. Isn't that cool? I heard somebody say that, and I took it, and I said, you know what? That's good, because that's exactly what happens. When I step out, then I don't even have to think about it. God, it's just there. God just shows me or says it, or it's inspired utterance, and I'm going, oh, thank you, Jesus, because it's not all about me. No. So that pressure's off. You know, when it says in the Word, don't take. What don't you said, take. one more thing. What oh. happened? <laughs> <laughs> I just love this microphone. <laughs> I know. It used to be me. Now you just go crazy. I know. <laughs> I'm good. I'm a, you're a good teacher. Yeah. You are a good I'll teacher. I'll tell you, it's, it's to be honored like this, uh, sometimes it just, I, I don't feel like I hardly did anything. I know. And, uh, it's very humbling. It is humbling. It, I could get, I could just get down on my knees, but I couldn't get up. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm we're, so, we're thankful. so thankful to all of you. And we are. We, we love, love you, you all. Oh, I, you know, the, there's so much love coming in right now that I can hardly stand it. I mean, I feel so loved. I want, to, I want you to sit on the stage for a second. So you don't have to keep standing. Okay. Kevin and Tom, would you come up? Where's Kevin? Is Kevin in the bathroom? Kevin, are you in the bathroom? <laughs> uh, are you kidding? I'm like, what? He's got <laughs> this is how we roll. It's real life. <laughs> Did you mean like a yeah, no, you're going to need a microphone. Oh. See, we never know what's going to happen, so we're going to do a thing. We're going to do a thing. Um, Tom, you can come. I'm going to sit, and you all two can stand or sit. You can sit, too. Kevin's going to come up. Look at this. She's wearing my color. Our color. We've shared this color for years. I didn't know all this. I, mean, all I didn't this. know all this. No, they didn't know this was happening. Sit down. We'll sit down. And, and I was going Kevin's going to sit down. I was going to get myself some flowers, and I thought, should I go to Kroger or should I go to Walmart? Aw. She was going to get herself some flowers, and she was deciding if she was going to go to Kroger's or Walmart, but we just delivered them for you. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, okay. I'm going to prophesy over you two. Oh. And Kevin's going to pray. Oh. And Tom's going to be in agreement. Yes. And then we'll see. I mean, who knows what he'll have you do? I don't know. But he was inspired to have him when he had, he didn't know what was going to happen as far as the presentations Tom did. It, and then he had them praying. And didn't somebody speak in tongues or interpret? Did you pray? I heard both of you right. doing both things. Did you both doing things this morning? I thought, oh. Yeah. This is what honor looks like. And this is how you learn 
what Christian heritage is, what generation to generation looks like. It was the most impacting thing to JJ and Lori. She said, I've been to camps with kids and adult camps all over the world. And she said, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen all different ages here. And we don't plan it that way. I mean, it's the campus for 13 to 12 to 25 year old people, but that you have these different ages and different folks here. And, um, and that's not by accident. And um, I'm very thankful that John and Mary Lou and Mike and Judy, that was their heart all those years ago, that everybody was together as a family. You know, you don't have a family meeting and say, well, you have to sit out until you're old enough or you're too old. That's not what a family meeting's about. Everybody gets to be in the family gathering so or meeting, whatever you call it at your house. So anyways, we're very thankful for Christian Family Fellowship and that you, we're sitting here because of you. And I wanted to say, well, it's, you know, John's idea. And the Lord said, yeah, well, Mike had to go remind him. <laughs> and it really, we, we are, that you yeah. took the revelation and, and well, went we and did that. Tom and Sue and Wilf and Lainey. And oh, here we got a microphone. They're, they're not going to hear a word we're saying. You're saying. Okay, well, we had a lot of support, too, uh, particularly uh, Tom and Sue and Wilf and Lainey. And there were others that, but uh, those particularly uh, were just uh, just great support. It's just all I can say. I mean, you know, we couldn't have done it without them. Oh, and you had a lot of fun too, right, Tom? Yes. Yeah. Fun. Oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah. I remember Tom when we went to ask him to be on the board. He said, "I'll be on there, but I'm only going to do it if we're going to have fun." <laughs> 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 There's been some high times, some low times, but in the, yeah. the race together is what makes yeah. it the joy that is set before you. You are our family. I mean, we have a very <coughs> small family. Mike has, I think, one living relative, and I'm real small on my side, but you are our family. I mean, yeah. I, I can't tell you what each one of you means to mean to us a lot. You'll never know, it, but in our hearts. We're so blessed to be to walk in here and to see and to and this one. Okay, we're done now. No, you can't keep talking like that. Yep, yep, that's good. I'll, I receive it. I know they honor me well, but we're going to honor you guys today. So you can't say anything I'm so more. Glad I wore a dress. She wore a dress. She got all dressed up for us. All right, here we go. Are we ready? Everybody, close your eyes. I have to see ya. <laughs> Just see what he wants to say. <laughs> I have set you as pillars. I have set you in foundational places. You've been faithful and true to everything that I've asked. You've paved the way in honey for me to be received, for my son to be lifted up. I'm so thankful for your faithfulness for how you are drawn to me and to my word, how you let me encourage your heart, how you have lifted up my son and given him honor and glory and praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Your time is not done, for you bring light and you bring fire. You're a catalyst for things that are new and for things that I need remembered. Come to me with love, for I will infuse you with strength. Do not fear for what is ahead, for in every transition I am there. I have set my angels as guardians for you in your pathways, in the days ahead, for your generations to come. The fruit that you have sown will not fall to the ground, for it is blossoming and bearing fruit already. The bushels and bushels of rewards that await because you opened the gate. Don't hesitate to come to me as the days go by, as your years build, so will your blessings be renewed. Be settled, be at peace. Know that your life and the commitment that you've made to each other was founded in me 
and there's more to come. Your time is not done. You're written in the book of life, and you bring me great joy. You bring me great joy. Kevin, would you pray? Father, in prayer for Mike and Judy, we, it's like we're praying for the entire faith community because their lives have defined what the ministry is and has been called to do for 25 plus years. Father, we pray for the thousands of people that they've touched in recent years who have been out touching lives that they don't even know about, they haven't even heard about, but the ripple effect of their impact and their faithfulness uh, it has been felt in other states, countries, and, and nations and cultures around the world, Father. We speak a blessing over the lives of the ripple people the folks who have been touched by Mike and Judy. Uh, Father, their faithfulness has shown us how to live the Christian life throughout our life. And that we would follow in their steps of faithfulness, using their giftings, uh, showing other people that they can walk in theirs, Father. So I just speak a blessing over their life, over their health, over their strength, over their extended families, Father. I speak a, uh, a renewal of their marriage that is special, that you show them that every chapter of marriage is a sacred chapter, and this one can be just as special and unique. Father, I breathe a freshness into their marriage where they can discover even new things about each other that just brings such shocking joy, Father, to their lives. I speak wholeness into their organs and bodies. I thank you that every aspect of their health and wholeness uh, is renewed and refreshed and restored, Father. We speak restoration into their bodies in every way, a youthfulness, Father, and a, a, a goodness into their bodies. Thanks for their families and extended families. In Jesus' powerful name, amen, amen. amen. And Tom is mic'd, so you don't have to worry about that. And you get to do whatever the Lord wants you to do. If that's a prayer, a blessing, a prophecy, you just will know. He wants your words to be the last words. The Lord wants to challenge you, and I, not in a bad way, but in a good way to believe him for more. He wants you to be a pioneer. For those seeking long life. So he's challenging you to believe for more to believe for the impossible, actually. He wants you to believe for what others have not dared to believe for. You are to pave the way for new standards a wealth abundance and long life the enemy whom you have stood against all of your life has tried to defeat you but Jesus showed up Thank you, Jesus. and put the enemy to flight Now, the Lord is telling you that whatever you believe for, he will back up 
whatever. He wants you to recapture some dreams that you thought were past. To expect him to show up more and more in the suddenlies. Because of what you have stood for in the finance realm, he wants to especially bless you there. Because you have dared to believe in him, he wants you to believe more. So that others will dare to go to higher heights. So know that there's a special touch and anointing on your life. To pave the way for those that follow. So he says, don't doubt anything that I've told you to do before, whether it was true or not. Just trust me, and we'll make the impossible happen together. Amen. Amen. I receive that. <sighs> and they all said amen. Amen, amen. 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 Oh, well, wow. we sure love you guys. Oh, thank you. Mwah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Thank you, Kevin. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. All right, and I think there's a card up here I need to grab for you, too. Everybody's taking a deep breath. <laughs> Next week, Pastor Michael Burroughs will be teaching on Father's Day. We're excited about that. This is for both of you, from all of us. All right, well, that's, that's a day. That's a day. Wow. On July, the week Sunday before Yes Camp, I'll be teaching again, and I'll do the part. We'll, we'll pick up the 10... The ten points of wisdom. wisdom. Oh, yeah. I'll be here. I had to ask for that one. Points of wisdom. The kids are coming, so um, be praying and speaking in tongues for those uh, young people and the crew. They're coming from all over the United States, and there are several of them right now that are working out how to get here um, on planes and by no trains this year, buses, cars, and planes. It's real, real. Oh. This this year's camp is really, really Go ahead. going to be, this year's camp is going to be out of this world. It is really a unique experience. So if you're a young person, oh, how I wish I were young. <laughs> er, you and are. could be you a part. Are. I, my yes, youth is re being yes, renewed yes, like that. We'll be we there, go. but I'm just saying, I look back and I have to be able to have what they have available this year, right now, to a young person is, well, precious and very, uh, uh, it's beyond cost. It, it, I mean, you can't buy what is gonna happen at this camp. It is just, it's priceless. So the ones that are coming this particular year are so uniquely, chosen and blessed beyond anything they could ever ask or think it is going to be out well it's it's you know, like a home run just saw it just knocking out out of the ballpark that's what this year is going to be wow well we'll receive that i receive it that too. was a it's, proclamation and a decree we'll get a, a we'll agree with that so we're going to go out on this one hebrews 10 24 i think i did it earlier in the niv i just love this i need to put it up so i know it and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And the Holy Spirit will teach us, and Jesus guides us, and the Father set it all into a perfect plan. And our job is to use love to keep accessing it. 
and that makes it easy. So we sure love you guys. Thanks for your patience and honoring our wonderful, beloved. You know, you guys are so cool because you're like parents and grandparents and friends and ministers. You are the the diamond that always reflects the different things we need in our life. So I don't think I'm going to be able to stand myself today. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's your day. Whoa. We might want to warn your children and everybody, but hey, cash it in. Cash it in. So we love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye, live streamers.